I'm Nathan. I'm Timmy. I'm Justin. And this is Three Old Tech Dudes. Wait a minute. (laughs) I think we just got lost. How did we do that? (sighs) This is just weird. It's wrong. Man, I got me a new speaker. What, what you got there? What that you got? Tell, that's, that's it's a, does that tell the future? It is. It is. Maybe it looks I, I would. I would like to say high fidelity, but <laughs> high something. I think unfidelity might be the get my picture making device here. Not, so this is not quite, but almost a one hundred year old speaker. Goodness. It turns one hundred in two years. Moses headphones. <laughs> He had a big head if this was his headphones. I'm just telling you that. <laughs> I broke Tim. <laughs> audio so generator. Nathan's going to go get an audio generator. What What is this thing? This This looks to be RCA-like. Yes, it's an RCA Radiola loudspeaker. Radiola. Huh? Model 100. This is early RCA stuff. This is 1920s stuff, I suspect. I'm... So is this to be affixed to something? Well, it's, it could be affixed to a radio or a pair of radios that Nathan gave me that I just stashed away somewhere. Oh, yeah. But Nathan still has the speaker and the antenna thing. So, oh, well, then it's out there, too. So. Huh. Yeah. Kind of looks like it would be a really cool wall speaker, like an old school PA thing. Yeah, got some looks. So the comical part of this is that thing was supposed to be portable that speaker why can't you make racket like a normal person no he got is that an ico <laughs> is that the, it is an ico i thought it was it's what i have yeah so this is this is my little audio generator which is my little friend <laughs> my little friend say hello to my little friend no um i've had this one for oof years i've tested more modern speakers with this device but one just so very similar to it before on the channel so viewers have probably seen it yeah and it's a signal generator they're a very common yep. generator so this speaker is literally 98 years old that's old uh this year so it's got some age to it you know about 500 hertz you know i just read that there's a human alive that's 106 that's craziness so I, I guess it's not as old as she is. All right. True. Um, let's see if I got this hooked up right. Finally, somebody using that. <laughs> oh, look at into this thing. So Wiring I got the coast to coast. This thing is is amazingly old. Yeah. And the cover comes off the back, so you're gonna see this that on. Yep. Okay. So the cover comes right off. It's actually three points that it connects into and just like twist lock type, almost like a BNC connector. Um, pretty gold. But this is an RCA model. Uh, RCA, you know, is what you already said. 100. Uh, 100. Yep. It's not model one. I A little bit, yeah. It's gonna, it's um it's old. <laughs> Make sure that's not going to get up in there. I don't think these wires are in good shape. Uh, directly to the speaker because it's Don't high. And touch the red and the black together. Now these typically took a whole lot of voltage swing to operate. Yeah, I think that's what. I'm, Actually, that little blue box got it in. I it. can hear it. Oh, I can't. I hear so that. Very slight. It's so very low. Um, it is there, yeah. but it is. So the way these, I mean, if you think about a modern speaker, you know, with big magnets and all that kind of stuff, right. this thing literally has a horseshoe magnet, which is probably near dead, I would almost guess, because um, it is just so old. Hilariously, what I should do is attach a couple of those, those um, rare earth magnets to this oh, thing, right. <laughs> like radically increase its <clears throat> magnetism. Um, but it does actually function. But these are really designed for a lot of high voltage going into them because they were designed to be worked with the old tube radios and the really old ones um it's it's hard to hear but 
Did you rotate it toward us? The yeah. back up from front from it. See if we're here now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not Casey Kasem's top forty. No. But it is. It's it's the coil is functioning to some extent. The but, coil is actually functioning, but I it is and it is coming. The cone is amplifying it. Yeah, as it, it should. And so. it's. I mean, it's it's really funny. So that this cone is super, super, super fragile. Yeah. Um. I still find it funny that in the in the manual that came with the radios, which this thing was part of the whole set, they showed it on the back of a Model T Ford <laughs> as a portable radio. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so it is just amazingly old, but to me this is just fascinating the way this works I and mean, we've got this is actually a filter coil down here this is a noise filter is what this sure. is um the schematics can actually be found online for this thing it's it's amazingly right. simple the funny thing with to me part of this is one it's got the horseshoe magnet but two there are adjustments to the speaker hmm. you have to align the speaker okay yeah well of course you do when's, when's the last time you had to align a speaker oh i know um it's just to me this is this is one of those fascinating pieces of electronics of history especially you consider the fact that this thing has less ability than just a headphone now for pretty much anything i don't believe these were generally super loud in the first place no i don't think so i if similar to the was anything well years ago super loud yeah. no uh this probably was this, capable this of probably three dates to the 1920s i don't know yes because by the early 30s they had super heterodyne yeah stuff and that was heavily amplified and that's because like i've got a 1931 atwater kent cathedral that we're going to talk about one of these days i recently got and it's 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 still very old but it's getting closer to the modern designs that came later in tube tube yes so and this um yeah it 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 is it is very very light. I'd say this is probably capable of maybe three watts, yeah. maybe five tops. I'd say, and that's probably pushing it. Sure. But the voltage is so high because the resistance of this thing. It, it I mean, considering the fact you can barely hear this cranked all the way up. Yeah. Um, you can hear that tone there pretty well. Yeah. So, and that's literally as high as it'll go. I wonder if I square wave that. It's like the there. ringtone that teachers aren't supposed to be able to hear. Yeah. Yeah, which that doesn't ever work. Well, for some people it does. Well, probably, yeah. <laughs> but it's, to me, I don't know, just, there's everything about this is just really fascinating for the age, like the, the woven cord. Oh, yeah, it's super cool. Um, the technology making this this magnet has got to be like really just about dead um because it might be it probably is honestly i wonder what would happen if we did put a couple of the <laughs> rare earth magnets just dunk right onto them <laughs> only one way to find out by golly that'll get the views there clank <laughs> okay we either just made it way better or horribly worse or did nothing at all or did nothing yeah, I don't think we did anything. That's, I think it's I a think little. It's, I think it's about as loud as it was. Fractionally louder at best. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Don't make it angry. I'm not so sure you didn't make it worse. I don't know if you can actually get it much worse, to be honest with you. But you are. Is the volume dropped? Huh. I think that's actually just a fraction louder. Yeah, maybe. But recharging this magnet would probably be a very good thing yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. Overall, this speaker appears to be in good condition. It is in amazing condition. I mean, it's dusty, but... Where did you get this set up? So, my stepdad, who passed away a few years ago of uh, cancer, um, had an original one that he had had and then it had been in his family forever. Um, and it got stolen, so he found a replacement set for part of... Um, the 
let's say warranty replacement now part of the uh, uh, insurance settlement sure. to replace it so he had had bought this to to restore it back to an original functionality and unfortunately he just passed away he never got around to it so it wound up sitting in in my house and with uh, two radios one with good guts bad exterior one with <laughs> great exterior and bad guts and i was going to try and make you know yep. one good out of two bad ones and the speaker and then the antenna and the antenna just need rewound that was yep. it um and honestly this thing probably would work too i mean if i if i used a audio transformer and that might actually work out of that 65 and one yeah it might it might to kick the voltage up to lower the because there's no current this, this resistance of this thing has got to be something yeah. like ten thousand ohms or something like that I wouldn't try i guess I guess it could <laughs> I mean, I, I won't pretend I know speaker tech that well. Well, this I'm is trying to think of everything yeah. I've learned about that water Kent twenty that I've never restored, which I had obtained those originally had a horn speaker with a coil in the bottom, but I bought the slightly newer Atwater Kent paper cone speaker, which has a lot of similarities to this, except it's not quite as deep. Hey, if we're not experimenting on this stuff, we're not having fun. That's so right. <laughs> I'm here to see if this thing works. Yeah. <coughs> so we've got a lightweight tone out of it. That's a good sign. That yeah, it means that the coil's still there. The coil exists and it functionally vibrates to some extent when fed. Oh, that's good. That's a proper right. signal. So. Peace. Okay. All right. Get the fuzzies off everything. Sometimes we're gonna I'll use the when I'm fed too. the sixty-five in one kit here because well, it was handy and it was sitting there and, and it has the parts I, we need and to I own accomplish it. the task, namely an audio I'll transformer. Put that on my DX7. Okay, so I believe I can go. Look, he's doing this without the instructionals or nothing. Dun, dun, dun. Well, yeah, I'm either going to make this work or not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm going to make it any worse. So. True. That's actually not any louder at all. Let me try the yeah. other direction. Huh. Well, I could have this... Because I don't know where the, the high resistance side and the low resistance oh, side is. And it's a transformer, so in this case, it's, well, technically it's high impedance, low impedance, but still measuring ohms. Yeah, that's not doing what I wanted it to do. Oh, well. Mm. Just to make sure it's still working the way I think it should work, I'm just going to hook it direct. Yeah, that's still working. All right. Because what you should hear, for example, hooked to a normal speaker, and we'll use the 65 one here for, for a high-tech speaker, because it's, it's a young speaker. Oh, there we go. Yeah. yeah, so that's what you really should hear. It's never super loud. I've but I've I this is actually the same piece of a piece of equipment or one like it that I use to test speakers in the radios I work on when I'm suspect of them. So yeah, and these are seeing how high the resistance is when it should be four ohms or eight ohms. So. Yeah, and my guess is this is probably like a ten thousand ohm. Yeah, they're like very that. high. They have very high resistance. I know. Um, so. Yeah, it's I I'm gonna it's guess doing pretty well though. It's not bad. I mean, well, I could <laughs> actually what it is. So. The DC resistance wouldn't is not necessarily what the AC resistance will be in this right. thing, but I could check the DC resistance pretty easily. on 20 mega ohm because I know it's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's a very high resistance. Yeah. Or it's screwed Open up. Open load. <laughs> mm, that's weird. So you should see. That should be. Yeah. yeah no, the wires are fine. So let me take it down to 200. Make sure the wires themselves are actually good. Yeah, they're adequate. So, yeah, that's this different. This is a very open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the the resistance on this thing, I don't know. It maybe it actually may be getting weak. I don't know. Hmm. There's a jacket to a wire that's. Yeah, It'll come apart. Well, surely there. not. So, of course, the other thing is it. It I I had to look at the schematic. It may have capacitor in line, which of course this won't work then because yeah, that's capacitor true. in DC. So, but I mean, it does still 
It does make sound. Yeah. <laughs> that seems to be the point right there where it, yeah, where it's giving the best audio. Let me kick it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. I can hear the high ones too. Yeah, it's just it's got a very limited range. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me go get my thousand watt amplifier. Yeah. No, I'm just I'm kidding. We're not going to uh, do that because oh, the end that would just burn us <laughs> into pieces. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that to this. <laughs> Uh, not a piece like this is this is one of those super rare antiques that I mean they're out there it's not like they make two or three of them but right. you know, but it's one of those things that this is just one of those rare pieces of, of tech history and communication history mm -hmm. that you just don't see a lot of people have anymore so this thing when it came out in 1925 but well, we can look this thing up on was it radiomuseum.org has this has schematics yeah so this is the radiola loudspeaker 100 and oh you're fine so its original price was 35 dollars which a back <laughs> dang <laughs> yeah which actually equates to like 500 and something now yeah, it's, yeah. It, that's crazy i looked up a little bit ago anyway this is a look at the rca radiola model 100 speaker from 1925 Great. so that is indeed old school mm -hmm. thanks for watching this video indeed checking yeah. out nathan's old speaker it is pretty cool it is actually pretty <laughs> it's pretty fun yeah. yeah be sure to like the video if you like it or go check out some of our other videos we get all kinds of stuff that we've talked about over yeah. the last several years so go check them out there's bound to be something you like if you like vintage electronics or even modern electronics in any way there's some stuff yeah. out there from all eras at this point on the channel so yeah be sure to click subscribe if you haven't already you know and uh help us out we'd appreciate it yep got anything else boys uh, i'm good you're good all right well hey until next time i'm timmy i'm justin i'm nathan and this is three old tech dudes thanks for hanging out with us here on three old tech dudes please subscribe to us here on youtube for more tech old and new tinkering at the workbench repairs ham radio electronics computers and more please like this video and share three otd with your friends to help us grow the channel we tweet at three old tech dudes one on twitter and you can keep up with us on facebook just search for three otd and look for our logo thanks so much for watching